For more on the future of police reforms, is Steve Cardian, a former law enforcement officer and a member of the Trump 2020 Advisory Board. Steve, when we look at the bill right now making its way through the Senate, uh, the big type of thing that seems to be holding that piece of legislation up is the idea of chokeholds and the idea of qualified immunity. Of course, Democrats shut down that bill today, at least moving forward to debate. What is your response to that bill and the way that Democrats are handling it right now? Well, first and most importantly, the, the qualified immunity is huge for law enforcement. If you do away with that, you're doing away with the quality officers that we, we have today. No one's going to want to take a job in which for doing their job, they could lose their home, their family, uh, their in, entire life savings. So uh, qualified immunity has to be included. The president was correct in what he said uh, when, when he did his, uh, his, 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 his talking and then Senator Scott as well. And when we talk about qualified immunity, I think it's important too for people to understand exactly what that is. Uh, it's essentially the idea that if there's some legal ambiguity regarding a situation between police officers and a civilian, that it does kind of side with the idea of police officers. The whole concept is to prevent frivolous lawsuits to be filed against those officers or even just ones that are completely made up. Is that generally correct? Yes, you know, you're you're working for the government in essence. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're carrying out their mission. And officers, if, if, if they perceive that they're going to lose that, that that's going to be a, a, a big hit to law enforcement. It's going to affect, hugely affecting morale yeah. and hugely affecting those that have come forward to take the job. And you know, that is something that you bring up that I think is very important too. We have these short-term effects right now, such as doing away with rioting and looting, but you bring up an interesting point and it's the long-term effects as well. I couldn't imagine that the there's the police officers are gonna see a surge in applications over the next couple of years. I mean, is essentially right now, it's a thankless job. You're out on the streets, you're putting yourself in harm's way. You're not being thanked by the public. In fact, to some degree, you're being demonized by not only the public in these areas, but also the people who are overseeing your actions, that being the mayor, governor, whatever it may be. Do you have those concerns that police may be seeing a, maybe a downward slope over the coming years? Well, you know, we've seen it in some of the big cities that haven't been able to attract qualified officers in which they're lowering the standards. Uh, they're allowing gun arrests to be considered for employment and they're taking those people. So it's already been done in many of the major cities, most of which are democratic. And that's the problem too. Uh, it's a little bit of a counterintuitive thing when people say they wanna defund the police because what you're saying then is that you want less resources to go into training, less pay for those officers as well. Essentially, you're getting worse prospects entering the police department, which could only exacerbate the allegations of uh, unnecessary use of force or racism, whatever it is. You're not getting the cream of the crop, if you will, when you're selecting police officers to police your community. I think that's a good point to bring up, but I wanna get back to the Senate legislation as well because the House has their own bill, the Senate has its own bill. We already mentioned what won't go into that. What type of reforms would you like to see? Well, more training. Uh, you mentioned the, the, the choke earlier. Now, people get confused. There's a couple types of chokes. I'm an early American Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt, and I've, I've been teaching martial arts for 40 years. The bilateral carotid restraint is probably one of the safest ways to take someone into custody. The esophageal choke, that's deadly. But we need more training. We need more officers to be able to use what we call less lethal tactics in their in their uh, defensive tactics. And and same thing. I I taught defensive tactics police officer across the country around the world. And uh, the grappling aspect. If officers were taught six months of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it would make life a heck of a lot easier. Mm. It's an interesting point too. I mean, it comes back to the idea too, where that also requires resources. And I think that when people say defund the police, that's something that they're not taking into account. I just said uh, prior some of the problems with that, but even that as well. I mean, if you're not training these officers properly, it does bring up some issues that maybe they are put in a situation that doesn't only harm them, but the people that they're supposed to protect, as well as the person that they're trying to detain as well. But before I let you go too, I want to talk about the idea just more broadly about the idea of defunding the police. A lot of people say that that means that that not only taking away from training, but then allocating that resources to maybe someone who's more specialized, such as a uh, someone who's more knowledgeable about drugs, for example, responding to overdoses or a uh, worker responding to homelessness, something of that nature. Do you think that is a plausible type of thing that we might see? Uh, I don't. Uh, I think the the aspect or prospect of defunding the police is is devoid of all common sense. I've never seen in a community where less police made it safer. 
And the concept of bringing in civilians to do people's jobs, well, we've seen that over the years. When somebody from crisis intervention, someone from social services, CPS, or any of the government or county agencies come in, they bring us along with them because they're always concerned about violence, uh, un unpre uh, unpredicting what's going to happen, and it's usually the person that they're going to see is either possibly criminal and or violent. No, and to, I mean, we could just look at Seattle's CHOP as a little bit of a micro case study. That's essentially what they tried to do there, and it didn't turn out very well, not only for them, but the people in that surrounding area as well. So I think you're right on to say that. But Steve Cardian, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you.